royal friends here. We've been with the Trust from the fifth to the fifth since 1999. But there's also a wonderful host of new friends here. Every now and then we would buy just one house in one village and we turn it into a guest house. In this way, the people in the village would have their own business and could be self-sufficient. One of the most exciting projects we did, it was an ancient Hungarian abandoned apathy man. And so it took us 10 years to raise money for this one, but we did. And the next photograph shows the builders all in the village who only use local people. They do hope lots of people come. Come to farmhouses as well, but this if you want to be a scholar and just well, you are scholars, but the scholars who come can read and read and read all the time because there's a wonderful library for languages. Have you ever wondered what it was like in pre industrial revolution times? This is probably about as close as you could ever get. Still drawn from a well, subsistence farming, horses and carts without a tourist in sight, not to mention the rows of lime washed houses, every one of them unspoiled. And over the last 15 years, they have managed to repair over 1,200 building, buildings and structures. That's 1,200. Absolutely staggering. I haven't begun, begun to mention the, the re-bed sewage systems that have been installed, the brick and tile kilns that have been built, <coughs> and all the other fantastic work that have been carried out through the MET's whole village project. I'm absolutely astonished by what has been achieved. If you haven't been there, then go. You won't regret it. Finally, a quote from Samuel Johnson, one of my favourites. Nothing will ever be achieved if first all possible objections must be overcome. It's the thing that dogs us in this country, but the thing that Jessica has seemed to completely ignore. And she's just ploughed ahead and faced every obstacle in her way and just got on with it. And if only more people had the courage and tenacity to just go for it, the world would be a more beautiful and interesting place. Thank you. I spent a week there last year or the year before and um, just seeing that streetscape is where my hire car broke down for two days, so fond memories. But do go if you can, it's, it's unbelievably peaceful. Uh, so I'm going to read um, three poems by Mihai Emanescu, which are chosen by friends of the Trust, Ramona Matrika and Ursula Fernaland. Hardly had I thought I should learn to perish Ever young, enwrapped in my robe, I wandered, raising dreamy eyes to the stars styled often solitude symbol. All at once, however, you crossed my pathway, suffering, you, painfully sweet, yet torture. To the lees I drank the delight of dying, pitiless torment. Sadly racked, I'm burning alive like Nessus, or like Hercules by his garment poisoned. Nor can I extinguish my flames with every billow of oceans. By my own illusion consumed, I'm wailing. On my own grim pyre in flames, I'm melting. Can I hope to rise again like the phoenix bird from the ashes? May all tempting eyes vanish from my pathway. Come back to my breast, you indifferent sorrow, so that I may quietly die. Restore me to my own being. Dreary the horn sounds in the eve on the hill. Sheep flocks return, stars on their way twinkle still. Water springs weep, murmuring clear, and I see under a tree, love, thou art waiting for me. Tired with their toil, peasants come back from the field, from the old church, laborers' comfort and shield. Voices of bells thrill the whole sky high above. Struck is my heart, trembling and burning with love. Ah, very soon quietness steals over all. Ah, very soon shall I race till I call. Under the tree there I shall sit the whole night, Telling thee, love, thou art my sole delight. Cheek pressed to cheek, 
There, in sweet ecstasy, we, falling asleep under the old locust tree, smiling in dreams, seem in a heaven to live. For such a night, who his whole life would not give? And if the branches tap my pain, and the poplars whisper nightly, it is to make me dream again, and hold you to me tightly. And if the stars shine on the pond, and light its somber shoal, it is to quench my mind's despond, and flood with peace my soul. And if the clouds their tresses part, and does the moon outblaze, it is but to remind my heart, I long for you always. Down where the lonely poplars grow, how often have I heard my steps that all the neighbours know, you only have not heard. Towards your window lighted through, how oft my gaze has flown, a world entire my secret knew, you only have not known. A word, a murmur of reply, how often did I pray, what matters then if I should die, enough to live that day, to know one hour of tenderness, one hour of lover's night, to hear your whispers soft caress, one hour then Come what might, had you but granted me a glance that was not filled with scorn, out of its shining radiance a new star had been born. You would have lived through lives untold beyond the ends of time, O oh, deity with arms so cold, O oh, marble form sublime, an idol of some pagan law as now no more is seen. Come down to us from times of yore, from times that long have been. My worship was of ages gone, sad eyes by faith beguiled, each generation handed on from father unto child. But now, I very little care to walk along that lane, <coughs> nor heed the face I found so fair, looks out for me in vain. For you are like all them today, in bearing and in guise, and I but look on your display with cold and lifeless eyes. You should have known to value right with wondering intent, and lit your radiance at night to love that God had sent. That's it. Thank you. Thank you.